<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hello. Now, this, uh, here's Andy Hello. here, and we are just at his grandfather's farm. So you can see there's these chili pepper plants, there's some uh, sesame uh, plants, sesame seed plants, and some catnip over on the far side, and then rice everywhere. But um, I'm after these chili peppers because we will be able to uh, extract capsaicin from them. Now capsaicin is what makes chili peppers and most peppers quite hot. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're allowed to pick um, some of these and we'll take them back to his house. So we're going to grab a bunch of these chili peppers and I'll meet you back at his house. Okay, so we are back at uh, Andy's house now. And uh, it's kind of dark in there, but you can see all the different peppers in there. Um, so we just put them in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius for about 4 hours or so. So uh, we'll close it up and uh, be back as soon as they're nice and dry. Now we did chop them in half to hopefully uh, speed up the drying process. And uh, you could just leave them out for a very long time if you didn't want to put them in the oven. But um, so in, uh, well tomorrow morning we'll be back and um, check in and see how dry these peppers are. Okay, so all the peppers as you can see are now dry. And it is important to have all the seeds also because the seeds are actually where most of the capsaicin is. So we just have it in a small blender here. So we're going to blend it into a nice fine powder and I'll meet you back after that's done. Okay, so as, <clears throat> as soon as your pepper is finely ground, it is important not to breathe it in because it really does hurt. But um, we're just going to put it in uh, something like this pot bottle here. Make sure it has a cap. So they apparently they don't have um, a funnel so we just use this piece of paper. So go ahead and pour it in Andy. My sister's just going to be holding it. Let's see. Pour all of that pepper powder right in, and we'll get it right falling down to the bottom. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to go get our ethanol. So I'll meet you back as soon as that's done. Okay, so you can see that we have all our ground pepper right here, and I breathed some into my nose, and it's stinging like it's horrible. And uh, Andy went ahead and tasted some, and it burnt his tongue. So, uh, yeah, my sister did too. It's really, really hot. Anyhow, so we got this um, ethanol here. And ethanol is, um, this is only 86% ethanol. I happen to know that in Canada you can get 95%, and the higher the purity you have, the better. But um, this 86% will work for this um, experiment. Um, but the, the less impurities that you have in it, the better. Anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and dump this entire 250 milliliter bottle into our um, pot bottle here containing our pepper powder. So um, I'll be back as soon as that's done. So we added all of the ethanol, and other solvents such as methanol will also work. Um, just Google, cap Google capsaicin and see what it's soluble in. We cannot use water because caps capsaicin is practically insoluble in water. Only 0 0.0013 grams is dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. So you really do need to use something else. And this ethanol will work excellent. So basically we're just going to vigorously shake this um, every now and then and just let it stand for probably a week or so to make sure that everything is dissolved out of here. Um, so the capsaicin will dissolve into the ethanol, um, hopefully all of it, and we'll be able to filter off any of the remaining um, um, uh, pepper uh, here. Um, and then we'll be left with our solution of capsaicin, which we can purify. Now, um, other YouTubers, YouTubers I've seen use what's called a Soxlid extractor, and um, it, it speeds up this process immensely, but um, I do not own one, and I don't have any lab supplies here, so we're kind of improvising. Um, but it would be a useful piece of appar apparatus to get. Anyhow, so we're just going to let the sand and shake every hour or so, just whenever you walk by it. Uh, so I'll see you back in about a week or so. Okay, so you can see here, um, I have these nice pink rubber gloves on because this is all that Andy's mother has. Um, because there's a bit of a story with uh, what happened. So we did let that uh, ethanol sit in there for about a week. And um, after that, I filtered off into this glass that's been evaporating for the past day. Now, um... I wasn't, I didn't wear gloves and I got it all over my hands and they burnt like it was horrible. My hands were on fire for like 12 hours and it was extremely painful. So today I'm wearing these gloves despite them being pink. Anyhow, so that's all in there and here's all our pepper grounds here. And today we're just going to be doing uh, a couple of washings with uh, more ethanol here to extract um, as much as possible. So yesterday we left all this here and that'll be fine. But uh, basically what we're going to be doing today is taking our ethanol and just pouring some into here, over these uh, pepper grounds here, and letting it filter through into a little dish I have underneath here. And there's just a strainer here with uh, one piece of uh, paper towel. This is just um, so that it filters fairly quickly. A coffee filter might take too long, we don't want that. Now after putting a bit of ethanol in here and letting it filter through, we will pour it into this separate glass over here. So I'm going to wash it with another whole 250 milliliters of water, just to try to get out as much as possible. 
And um, I'll meet you back then. Okay, so I forgot to mention, definitely do this in a bathtub or a sink or something because if you get this on the floor, it's going to be really hard to clean up and like capsaicin, as I said before, really, really burns. I was up till 2 a.m. and I finally had to fall asleep with my hands in ice water because it was horrible. It's like your hands are on fire. Anyhow, so we filtered everything off and you can see um, that it doesn't have very much of uh, capsaicin dissolved into it due to the color. So. I can safely assume that we're done here, so I threw everything down the toilet and flushed it. So um, you can see we're left with uh, this here, and then our second washing, which uh, we will add to this one as soon as this evaporates down a fair amount, because clearly we do not have enough room to add it right now. Now you could let this stand out for a week or so, and it should evaporate down to a very small amount, which would be primarily the capsaicin and other capsaicinoids. But um, what I uh, am thinking on doing is putting this in the oven or another hot place to help it evaporate quicker. Um, and then as soon as it's evaporated enough, I'll add in this other stuff and just evaporate everything off. And then I'll show you what to do after that. So I think I'll go put this in the oven and after a couple of hours at really low temperature, it should be all evaporated. Be sure not to put it too high as ethanol is highly flammable and ethanol vapors can explode. So you will want to keep it probably definitely below 80 degrees Celsius just to ensure that there is no spontaneous combustion inside of your oven or something. Anyhow, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven and I'll meet you back. So I very quickly realized that putting it in the oven is an absolutely stupid idea. If you heat it up and you get a bunch of vapors and there's any source of an ignition, you could have an explosion. So instead what I did was I used an electric burner and set the temperature on low just so that the ethanol would evaporate faster. And within an, hour, within an hour, it was down to a very small amount. So I put it in a large pot, and then when it was uh, getting quite a bit lower on liquid, I put it in a smaller pot and boiled it to almost complete dryness, but made sure that it was still um, liquid enough um, that it could be transported to this small little container here. Uh, now, any container will work, and I just chose this hand sanitizer bottle. Um, and make sure it is cleaned out thoroughly. Now, remember... Um, that you must wash all your pots and everything that you used extremely well. And do not use a gas stove because the ethanol vapors are highly flammable and in a confined space they can be explosive. So if you are boiling off ethanol and it, it's near a flame, then you're just asking for trouble. So make sure it is an electric burner if you are going to speed up um, removing the ethanol through that way. Anyhow, so in the end we were uh, left with not too much but a fair amount of this um, very contaminated uh, capsaicin extract. Now this could be purified except that I'm going um, off to Japan away from Korea in a couple days and I won't have time. I don't want to accidentally mess with this because you can't bring a whole lot of liquid across the border. Now if you were going to purify this you'd have to get rid of all the beta carotene in it which is what gives it this orange color and there's also a lot of other capsaicinoids not just capsaicin which is also contaminating it. Um, so one thing that I haven't tried and not sure if it will work or not, but you might want to try, is uh, simply taking this and putting it in some water and mixing it around. Capsaicin is insoluble in water, so should not dissolve in water, and it would remove any of the uh, leftover ethanol and any additives to the ethanol because it was only 83%. There's clearly some other impurities, and it would also remove any of the other beta carotene which would probably go into the water and stuff and it could clean it up a fair amount but it could also lose everything I think I'll just end up leaving it like this because my plan is for probably hot sauces and maybe even I'll make a video on how to make pepper spray out of this or something anyhow so I hope you guys enjoyed and be very careful with this as it is highly concentrated and will definitely burn you